I always knew it was like Arnold. Arnold described his wife. He described Maria Shriver before he ever met her. He knew exactly what she looked like. I knew exactly what my wife looked like. And she's probably sitting out here listening, but uh, I love it. When she walked in, I'm like, it's her. Your, your wife, when you, where, where'd you meet her? You know, obviously, uh, I love, I, I coach a lot of entrepreneurial dads and stuff. So I love the bare fact that you've been married for so long, you're committed. And in and, and reality is in the fitness industry, I mean, the, being a good looking guy, always in magazines, obviously temptations are there and stuff like that. Being married for so long and having a, being a family man is, is, is amazing. When did you meet her? How did you meet her? And what does she mean to you? And give me some stories about you two as a, as a couple. Oddly enough, I met her in the gym. Yeah. And it was, uh, you might give me crying here right now. No, that's all good, man. Because this is, this is authentic. I love it because it, is. Is, it shows, it shows who you are. And I love that. Yeah. I don't give a shit what anyone thinks. You know what I'm saying? It's it, but it, 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 it makes me reflect on what we've been through. You talk about, give me some scenarios of your life. Yeah. You know, you're with someone for 36 years. Yeah. You experience a lot. And in the later stages of marriage, when your kids start moving away and you're faced with each other, you, you face challenges that really test your resilience of being someone who is true to a commitment you made to somebody, especially when you start changing as a person, because we all evolve. We become a different version of who we were at 23 years old when we met. So I'll never forget. She walked into the gym and I was the manager of a new gym. And uh, I always knew it was like Arnold. Arnold described his wife. He described Maria Shriver before he ever met her. He knew exactly what she looked like. I knew exactly what my wife looked like. And she's probably sitting out here listening. But uh, I love it. When she walked in, I'm like, it's her. That's my wife. I mean, literally. And I was a guy that took advantage of my looks then and was that guy you know what i mean yeah but i knew right then and how, how old are you clark how old are you? i was 23 or something so you're young yeah. still i'm young and i had experienced life in hyper speed yeah for a 23 year old i'd already traveled around the world as a marine i, I had been exposed to more life as a man than most men will ever experience and i'm not saying that as some badge of honor i'm saying that to the point where I was done living that life, man. And it was not something that resonated with me, even though I was acting that way, yeah. it wasn't who I was at the core. Yeah. And it's really interesting because I see it in my son. Now I watch my son. He's not a promiscuous guy. He's good looking. He could get any girl he wants. And I look at his peers and I watch how they behave themselves. And I sit back and I look at my son who was the quarterback in college, good looking guy, but he wasn't that guy. And I'm like, I'm so grateful that he got that part of me, but he didn't even go to the lengths that I went to. But when I saw my wife at some point in the process of us getting to know each other in that gym, I was standing next to a friend who was my manager. And Anita is her name. She was standing across the gym on a scale. And I said, see the girl over there on the scale? He's like, yep. I said, I'm going to marry that girl one day. And I'll never forget. He elbowed me. and He's like, you get married, bro. That'll be the day. And we have been, we had our first date at his house and we just ran into him at a concert just a couple of years ago before COVID happened and all that, where he's married to the same lady that I introduced to when Anita and I went out, Anita went out on uh, our first date. So yeah, that's, that's crazy. Yeah. And and she's been a very supportive person in my career. Can you imagine like you even tapped into it? Can you imagine being married to me? Like I've been all around the world modeling with beautiful fitness models. I've been on cover after cover after cover with girls. And the only thing that you have in your mind is a picture that you see on whatever a magazine. And then you start creating these stories in your head. And, And it's, it's, it takes a strong person to, put up with that sort of thing. And as much as my wife is not at like actively involved in my business, she's actively involved in my business. Yeah. And I've been guilty of like accusing her of not supporting me when that is so far from the truth, you know? And, uh, 
I'm, I'm learning a lot. I'm learning I'm, so much. I, I, I've been married for going on to 18 years now and I'm 44 and I have uh, three main companies, but my wife is very independent. And I think she's very much like your wife. She, she has that great independence, but she's very supportive. She's that, that grounding anchor when I come home. And I think that's so amazing having that grinding anchor because when you're an entrepreneur, you're always on the go, your life just gets to you. And sometimes just coming home and having that ground, that, that reality check, like, Hey, this is, this is where you belong is so powerful. And, yeah. and I appreciate that, man. I appreciate that. How old were you when you had your first child? You're, 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 you have two children, right? A boy and a girl? Yeah, 26, I believe, when Taylor was born. And Taylor is 30 now. Yeah, so around 26. What does fatherhood mean to you? Everything. I love it. I love it. Give me some detail. Give me some stories of you and your son, and then I want to hear some stories of you and your daughter. Because if you know, I mean, after this is done, we'll talk a bit. If you know, a lot, a lot of my story comes through my son where um, we'll talk after about it, but uh, 13 years ago, he was born and he was diagnosed with several palsy and he was going to be confined to a wheelchair. And I've spent the last 13 years changing his narrative, changing his path. And I got him from possible wheelchair to AFO braces to, we set a goal five years ago before his 13th birthday, he would run his first marathon by his 12th birthday. He was out of his braces by his third. He turned April 19, 2021 13 years old, April 18th, we ran our first marathon together and I'm documenting his whole life. And this has been this incredible journey because he's just this angel, this kid. Like I talked to my son, I get goosebumps. He's just this sweet. I call him my puppy. I come home and who's the first at the door. He's being a dog to the door. He's coming to give daddy a hug and a kiss every, every minute. So fatherhood is, is a massive part of who I am. So what does fatherhood mean to you? Give me more details. Give me some stories of your son. Cause obviously you have a passion there. Cause I almost brought a tear to your eye as well. My kids. I often say I'm a fan of them as humans. Yeah, me too. I have two amazing humans that are so inspirational, so encouraging. My daughter, Taylor, is an amazing athlete, probably the best athlete in the family. She was a track star in high school. She played volleyball. We bought her a camera for a graduation present. She is using a camera still to make her living. She takes photos of women boudoir photography, but not perfect women, women who need empowerment. So she uses photography to empower these women who feel fat and ugly and unappreciated and outside of the scope of what our Western culture says is a perfect woman. She is one of the most amazing humans ever. And everything she does, she rises to the top. She did CrossFit. They had her competing in two weeks. She did boxing. And she just like, I mean, I'm like, Taylor, how are you so good at everything you do? I'm like, oh, because I am. <laughs> but that was a little side joke there. But anyway, <laughs> she's phenomenal. She's coming over today, as a matter of fact, and I can't wait to see her. How old is she? She's 30. Yeah. She's it's 30. crazy how time flies by. Oh, dude, it's it's unbelievable. It, it's truly amazing. And it's, it's so crazy how the last four to five years I, I live, and I love you said that before, I live with zero regrets. And I've always done that for the last four to five years steadily. Like I really focus on it. Time is a currency because, you know, it is when you're young, time is abundance. When you get older, you see your parents getting old, everything starts changing. And I just lost my dad eight weeks ago. And it's been probably the hardest last eight weeks of my life. And, and he was my best friend. I was a 44 year old that would call my dad two, three times a day. I would call my dad every night to say good night. That's who I was. And that's our relationship. So to lose him, it was a sudden unexpected heart attack, never smoked, never drank power walked every day. It just happened and there was no goodbye. So that's been, it's been crushing me. Right. And, but I lived with no regrets with him. So I love that you said with the rest, because that's the biggest thing is you always hear that people on their deathbed, their regrets of the things they never did. They never tried, they never accomplished. Right. So I love that how you understand that. And, and, and as you're, you're looking at your daughter 30, like I look at my daughter just turned 15 and she's, I swear to God, she's a splitting image of what you're saying about your daughter. She's a super athlete. She's the kid that the other day I'm, I'm, I could run and we're doing sprints and she was just blowing by me already. I'm like, how's this kid doing this shit? And it's, and it's funny because she's a, fin both my kids, they don't play video games. They are workout fanatics. I do all the posts. See my storyline. They were, they, they, they're the two fighting for the treble at home. They're the ones doing the work. They're steadily every day. They work out like December breaks now. And they're like, so excited. I left today and they're doing their workouts together and they train together. They work out together, which is amazing. I love that. So uh, let's talk about your son a bit. Yeah. So Mitch, that's my buddy. And much like you and your dad, it, uh, it's a relationship that both of my kids, their whole entire life, 
they've never had a day where we haven't prayed for them from the second they were born to every time I see them, like literally at night, if my son now comes here to spend the night, he'll come in our room and he'll just lay over our bed so we can pray for him and my daughter too. And it's just such a special thing. And I'm, I'm so sorry about your dad because I understand that. And Mitch is a guy who is another person who excels at everything he does, but he does it differently. He gets pissed. He gets frustrated. Then he digs in and he figures it out and he gets it done. Then he's over it and he moves on to something else. And tonight, much like you and your dad, we spend so much time together. And I think he's now at a place in his life where he's really beginning to appreciate what I bring to his life. He's selling solar door to door. He came to me about six months ago and said, I'm putting a bet on myself. I'm quitting my job. I want to go 100% commission. I'm going to sell solar door to door. And uh, I'm going to be the best this company has ever seen. Well, you know how it is. It's hard. And he went four months with no sales. And he's out there knocking. And I said, hey, bud. No, he said, hey, you want to go knock with me? And I'm like, let's go. I jumped up, put my pants on. We went out. And... I am completely different from him. When I play football, I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a, I'm a loud guy. When he plays football, he's a quiet guy, but he still gets the job done. So I approached the doors in the way that I would. And it was so neat because I approached the door and he got the, the conversation going. And he said, you know what? I'm learning stuff from you already. And as a matter of fact, we're going to go back to a, a house tonight where I approached it for him and I gave him a different look. I said, here's how, here's what you should say when you go to the door. I said, Hey, did you know there's a screen on your roof up there? Just say that. He's like, I said, Mitch, there's a screen on the roof. If you come in with this pitch, people are instantly going to get that feeling. But if you say, Hey, did you know there's a screen on the roof? Watch. The icebreaker. Yeah. Hey, do you know there's a screen on the roof? Oh yeah, I know. We've been meaning to get that, but it's so hard. And I got busy in this and that and the other thing. You know what else I noticed? You don't have any solar panels up there. Is there any reason why? Has anyone talked to you yet? I'm sure someone's talked to you, right? You know, and boom, he worked that deal. I went back with him. I babysat the kids playing football with them in the front yard so he could close the deal. That's the kind of relationship I have with my kids. If they say, let's go, I'm stopping what I'm doing. I love it. And I'm getting dressed 